stylings, Mimi G here at MimiGStyle.com and I am so excited to be able to offer step-by-step -step video tutorials to accompany my simplicity patterns. Today we're going to be working on 1283 View B. Let's get started. Here are some of the basics you're going to need. You are of course going to need pattern 1283. It comes in size 6 to 14 and 16 to 24. You're going to need an invisible zipper. I like to use a longer zipper, so I'm going to be using a 12 inch zipper. Uh, you can use a 9 inch zipper if you have one handy. You're going to need some pattern weights. I just use large washers from my local home improvement store. A marking pen for your fabric, either a chalk pen, a pencil, or a fabric marker. A seam ripper is always handy. Two scissors, one for paper, one for fabric, and some pins and some interfacing. The skirt was designed for moderate stretch knits, so you could use a double knit or a ponte. Today I'm going to be using a striped fabric and a contrasting solid black fabric. You could use two solids or a print and a solid or a stripe and a solid, whatever suits your fancy. The skirt is also fully lined, so you can choose to line it or not line it. Uh, you can use a tree coat to line your knits. I'm going to be using a really lightweight black knit that I had in my stash because uh, I didn't actually have any tree coat available. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to cut out all of your pattern pieces and you're going to make sure that you set aside the ones that you need to cut out of lining as well. So let's go over the pieces you're going to need. You're going to need piece 9 which is our waistband. You're going to need piece 6, which is the side front. You can use this to cut out your contrasting fabric. Number 8 is the front lining, so you're going to need to cut this out of your lining fabric. Piece 7 is going to serve as the back of your skirt and also the back lining. So you will cut this piece out of fabric and out of lining. And then Piece number five, which is the front of the skirt, and it's cut on the fold of the fabric. I'm going to be cutting this out of striped fabric. Before we cut out our pattern pieces, we're going to lay out our fabric with right sides facing each other. The right side is the fabric side that people will see, and it should be folded in half lengthwise with salvage edges meeting. When laying your pattern pieces on top of your fabric, you want to make sure that you're following the grain lines. So the lines that you see on your tissue paper should be running parallel to your selvage edge. And so you want to make sure that when you lay your pattern piece, that the grain line is going in the same direction as your selvage edge. Now that all your pattern pieces are laid out, make sure that your grain lines are going in the direction they are supposed to, and then simply cut around your pattern pieces. It's really important that you transfer all of your dots and notches that are on your pattern pieces. Each dot or notch corresponds to another pattern piece and it helps you along in the construction to make sure that you're adjoining your pieces correctly. So you want to make sure to transfer all of the dots that you see. And the easiest way for me to do it is I make a little snip into my notches. And then for my dots, I simply use a pin and I put it in whatever size I've cut. And once I have it through all layers, I simply lift my tissue paper and I mark where my pin is. That way when I remove my pin, I've marked my dot on both sides. And then I will do that for all of my dots. Now in the event that you are using a striped fabric like I am, I'm going to show you how I make sure that my stripes are exactly aligned on both sides of my skirt. Now you could technically fold this over and cut it on the fold, but you're kind of guessing whether or not those stripes are going to be exactly straight. So what I do is I lay my pattern piece and I use my side notch as a guide and I'll put it on one of the stripes. And I want to make sure that both my arrows are on a straight line. And once I have it the way that I want, and my lines are straight, I go ahead and I start to cut. Mark my notch 
stitches. Clip my notches before I move anything. I find my dart legs for the size that I've cut out and I mark by making a little clip into each dart leg. And I transfer my dot with a fabric marking pen. You could just poke a little hole through it since we're working on only one side right now. Poke it right through your paper and make your marking. I'm going to show you really quickly how I like to transfer my darts. As you can see, these are where these are the ends of my darts. And these are my dart legs, which we snipped into. And so all I do is I take my ruler and I go from one slit of my dart leg to the dot. And then I go to the next one. And I've created my dart. And then I do the same thing on the other side. Then what I do is using a chalk roller or a chalk pencil, I mark where my center front fold line is. I just make a couple of dashes. I remove my weights. And I'm just going to place my pattern piece along the dashed line. I can immediately tell by looking at it that my lines are straight and then I cut out the other side. Snip your notches, snip your dart legs, poke a little hole through and mark your dot. And now you have a perfectly cut piece with very straight lines. Now this is uh, an ultra weft, lightweight, knit, fusible interfacing that I'm using. It's 85% rayon, which is really great. It works really nicely. It fuses well and it stays even after multiple washings. So what I like to do is I lay my fabric and my interfacing on top of each other. Then I lay my pattern piece on top and I cut them out at one time to make sure that they're both the same size. Once I've cut out both my waistband and my interfacing, if you feel one side is kind of bumpy, that's the size that has the glue. And so you want to make sure that that side is facing the wrong side of your interfacing. And you're going to use your iron and you're going to press and hold. Don't do this. Just press and hold until you reach the very end. Once they're fused together, they become one. I have used a very lightweight, fusible interfacing. It's 85% uh, rayon, so it holds up really well. It washes over and over again. It won't um, detach from your waistband. So I really like this one. This is what I've been using. I don't want a very stiff waistband, so a lightweight fusible is working really nicely for me. I have already cut it the same size as my waistband and I have fused it together by laying the sticky side, the, the part that's kind of bumpy, that's the fusible side, to the wrong side of my waistband and then I just simply apply pressure and I hold for a couple of seconds until both pieces have fused together. I have my waistband, I've cut out my center front piece, 
I've cut out my side pieces, my back, and I have also cut out my lining pieces. Once you have cut out all of the pieces that we need, we can get started. Before we start sewing, make sure you're using a ballpoint uh, needle or a stretch needle and that you're using a stretch stitch or a very narrow zigzag to sew the entire skirt. We're going to start by making our darts. So I want you to fold and match up the slits that we made and pin. And then I want you to pin at the dot, which is the end of our dart. And then we want to pin one more time along the dart legs. So I'm going to pin on one side and make sure that I'm coming out on the other line on the other side. And I'm going to pin. And we're going to sew all the way through that line. So follow your guide, follow that line. And then we're going to sew directly off of our fabric. going to tie it off instead of back stitching so that we don't create a dimple to just make like three little knots and then clip your threads and then make the other dart the same exact way go ahead and press your darts so that they are nice and flat and now we're going to use the side front pieces. And what you're going to do is you're going to align it so that your notches meet. The wide part goes towards the narrow part of the front. So I want you to match your notches first. You have some notches on your side piece and on your skirt piece, your front skirt piece. And then you're going to pin at the top. And then pin in between those two pins. And then pin at the bottom. And then pin in between those two. And we're going to start sewing at the bottom of our skirt using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. around we have inserted the side piece and you're going to do the same thing to the other side now that I have both side panels inserted I'm going to go to my ironing table and I want you to press your seams open on both sides once you press your seams open go ahead and set this aside and we're going to insert our invisible zipper in the back of our skirt. Now the instructions call for an invisible zipper foot, but I'm going to show you an alternative method if you don't have an invisible zipper foot and instead just have a standard zipper foot like I do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew up the center back seam. And so I'm going to have you pin at the top of the skirt so right sides are facing. And then I want you to pin at the notch where uh, you made a little slit. That's also where the zipper is going to stop. And then over at the vent, you should have marked a little dot. And I want you to 
go ahead and pin there. And so what we're going to do is, starting at the top, we're going to sew a basting stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So put your machine on the longest stitch you have available. And we're going to sew a basting stitch until we reach our notch. Now that we've reached our notch, I'm going to have you back stitch and switch back to a normal stitch length of 2.5 and continue sewing until you reach the next dot. Now I want you to press this seam open. Okay, I have pressed my seam open and as you can see I made a little slash, a little cut right above where I stopped at the vent. And so the reason I did that is so that I could open this and um, iron it flat and also so I could press my vent and then lay the other side over it and that way I could keep this pressed open without it affecting my vent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be working with one side of our seam allowance with the rest of the skirt to the left of us. And take your zipper, and I'm using a long zipper so that my zipper pull isn't in the way, and I'm going to start my zipper with my the bottom of the zipper just past the notch, maybe about an inch and a half below the notch, and I'm going to pin. And I'm making sure that the center of my zipper is aligned with the center of that seam. And so of course my zipper is going to extend well above my skirt and that's okay because we'll cut it off once we attach our waistband. And I'm just going to pin at the top. I'm going to change the zipper feet. I'm going to align my needle so it's all the way to the left. And I'm going to use a basting stitch because we just want to hold this in place. And you're going to sew on one side. Remember that only the seam allowance is beneath you. Turn it around and make sure that the rest of the skirt is now to the left of you and starting from the bottom up. You're going to do the same thing. You're just going to stitch down the zipper. And now I want you to open your skirt and I want you to pin through all layers where that notch is, turn it around, and I want you to open the basting stitches from here down to that pin. So get your seam ripper, and remove that center basting stitch. Go ahead and open your zipper, remove the pin, and I want you to take the zipper pull as far down as you can possibly go. If you can pull it out from the underside, that's great. 
Now turn back to the wrong side. And now we're going to stitch it down using a regular stitch length. And this time we're going to sew as close to the zipper teeth as we can. The zipper teeth open just a tad, so as you're sewing, just pull the zipper teeth open and use your presser foot to help guide you. Get close, but don't sew onto your zipper teeth. Turn it around and do the same thing on the other side starting at the bottom. I'm using a white thread so that you can, guys can see it because it's hard to see on black fabric, but you should be using a thread that matches your fabric and your zipper. your zipper. Now that we have a nice and clean invisible zipper installed, we're going to attach our front to back at the side seams. Now I want you to do this with a basting stitch so that you can try on the skirt, see if you need to take it in a bit or let it out a bit before sewing permanent stitches. So take your front piece and lay it right sides together over the back and make sure to pin at your notches first at the side pin at the top pin at the bottom of your skirt couple more times you're going to pin both side seams and then you're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and using a basting stitch Once you've sewn your basting stitches onto both side seams, go ahead and try the skirt on and see if you need to take it in a bit or maybe let it out a bit. Now that you have tried on your skirt and everything fits or you needed to take it in a bit or let it out a bit, go ahead and sew your permanent stitch using a regular 2.5 stitch length. And then we're going to finish off a little something at the vent before we move on. So what we're going to do is I want you to open your vent up so that it's aligned like this, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to position your needle where we stopped stitching and we're going to sew across. It should look like this. 
Now that we have our vent uh, sewn at the top, we're going to set this aside for a couple minutes and we're going to work on our lining. So I want you to get your back lining pieces and we're going to cut off the vent extension. So what I do is I just take my ruler and I align it to the edge of my fabric and we're just going to cut off that piece here, that extension that you see. Now that we cut off our extension, we're going to pin and I'm going to place my pin right at that dot where the vent was, but right before we cut it off, of course. And we're going to sew between the vent dot and the notch for where the zipper is going to stop. So go ahead and put your, machine, your needle in the little dot where the vent was. And using a regular 2.5 length stitch, you're going to sew all the way up until you reach the notch. Now that I'm at my notch, I'm going to back stitch. and I'm going to press my seam open from the top through the stitching and down below, turning over 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, I pressed my seams open and then I folded and pressed over 5 eighths of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and do our the darts on both the front and back of our lining. So just the way you did the uh, darts for the front of the skirt, you are going to do the darts for your lining. So pin at the top, pin at the bottom, pin halfway up your dart leg, and then sew following your guide. Lay your lining pieces uh, right sides together, so lay your front piece on top of your uh, back piece. And you're going to stitch the sides the same way you did for your skirt, so you should know how much you needed to remove or add on to your side seams after trying on your skirt. So you go ahead and pin at your notch, pin at the bottom, and sew your side seams the same way we did for our skirt. The last thing we're going to do before attaching our lining to our skirt is we're going to trim away one inch from the hem of our lining. So I want you to measure across one inch. So lay your skirt flat, your skirt lining flat, measure across one inch, and then trim that inch away. I have already trimmed off mine. And that's to assure that when you attach your lining to your skirt and you wear it, your lining won't peek out from underneath your skirt. Okay, we're going to attach our lining to our skirt, to our skirt at the waist. So I want you to turn your skirt wrong side out, and I want you to turn your lining right side out. And you're going to slip your skirt inside of your lining so that the wrong sides are matching are facing each other. And then what I want you to do is to pin matching your notches along the waistline. Match your side seams. Match your darts. I want you to open your zipper and you have your pressed edge of your lining against your zipper and you're going to pin. And now we're going to sew all the way around. 
Now that we pinned our lining to our skirt at the waist, we're going to baste the top together. So starting at one end and using a long basting stitch, you're going to stitch all the way around. I'm using um, about a half inch away from the edge of my fabric. You can turn your skirt to the inside just so you can check it. And now when you look inside of your skirt, you have a nicely finished lining. And now all you need to do is to slip stitch this closed. I went ahead and pinned my lining just so that it stays in place as I'm slip stitching. And I'm going to start at the bottom. And you just want to grab uh, maybe a thread or two of your skirt and then a thread or two of your zipper tape. And you're taking very tiny, tiny bites. You're going to sew all the way up until you have closed your opening. The smaller the bite, the less you'll see your slip stitching. It should almost be invisible. Okay, I turned my skirt to the right side and I have gone ahead and pressed 5 eighths of an inch on the unnotched edge of my waistband. On the notched edge, you should have several notches a couple of dots and some notches in the center as well. And so starting with the left side, we are going to extend the waistband about 5 eighths of an inch and we're going to pin. And then you're going to match your notches and your dots. So your dots should be matching your side seams. And then you want to align those center notches on your skirt to the ones on your waistband. Your dot to your side seam. And then the other end is going to extend further than 5 eighths of an inch. So go ahead and pin your notches and we're going to start to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance go ahead and place your skirt under your needle and you're going to start sewing all the way around. Now that we have attached our waistband, it is perfectly safe now if you have an extended zipper like I do to go ahead and cut off the excess. And now working on the end that has just the 5 eighths of an inch extension, you're going to fold it over so that the folded edges meet and you're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And 
trim this corner off. Trim a little bit of your seam allowance. And when you turn it to the inside, you'll have a nice flushed finished and you can use your point turner or your scissors just be careful to push out the corner and then we will slip stitch this closed now on the other end where we have the longer extension we are going to fold it in half without the folded um, bottom and what we're going to do is we are going to sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to stop and pivot and we're going to sew until we reach the zipper. So go ahead and put a little pin so that you know where you're stopping. And we're going to sew down and across. Pivot. When you turn it over you have a perfectly clean extension so let's go ahead and clip off some of this seam allowance trim it and then pull it to the inside use your point turner and push out the corners And then the zipper part goes inside and gets covered up. Now all you need to do now is to slip stitch this closed. So just put a couple of pins in place all the way around so that your folded edge just barely covers your stitching. want to pin it all the way around just to make it easy on yourself and then once you do that you're going to take your hand needle and right in that corner you're going to insert your needle and you're going to take just a couple of threads from your skirt and just a couple of threads from your waistband and you will slip stitch this closed. Okay, we're going to hand sew our closures onto our waistband. So on the part that ex is extending, you're going to sew the bracket. So you're going to align the bracket with your zipper. And you're going to put your needle in from underneath and you're going to sew it like a button. in one hole over into the other and you'll do that a couple times and then just put the needle through the threads and make a little knot and then one more time. And then you're going to do the bottom the same way. On the other side, the one that's flushed with the zipper, you're going to attach the bracket to the inside. And so you want to place it close to the edge, but not too close. And you don't want to go from the underside because you don't want stitching on the top. So you're just going to grab a couple of, of threads from your waistband. And tack it at each little hole. And you'll do the same thing to this side and then once more to the center. 
Okay, once you have your closure done, all that's left to do is the hem of our skirt and our lining. So I want you to press up an inch and a quarter. And you can do this by hand or you could do this on the machine like I am about to. And I'm going to stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge of my fabric. Once you've sewn the hem of your skirt, you can turn over your extension and you can stitch, hand stitch this down. So cut off any loose threads. And I like to add weight to my vents, so I'm going to turn it under. And I'm going to slip stitch the corner. Okay, all that's left to do uh, now is to do the hem of our lining. So I want to go ahead and sew the lining vent clo um, down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it to the inside where I can see it. And starting at the bottom, I'm going to turn it under and then turn it again. And I'm going to sew close to that edge. When I get past where the uh, opening is, I'm going to put my needle in and I'm going to pivot across. And then I'm going to pivot again and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now we have a finished edge on both sides of my lining. And now I'm going to turn under a quarter inch and then I'm going to turn under a half inch and I'm going to sew my hem all the way around. It may be helpful if you press this first. So press a quarter inch and then turn it over and press a half inch and then sew all the way around. And we are all done. I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me and I will see you guys again very soon. Peace.